Psalms 13. When you have it, signify by saying amen. amen. The word of the Lord reads, How long will thou forget me, O Lord? Forever? How long will thou hide thy face from me? How long shall I take counsel in my soul, having sorrow in my heart daily? How long shall my enemies be exalted over me? Consider and hear me, O Lord my God. Lighten mine eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. Let mine enemies say I have prevailed against them, and those that trouble me rejoice when I am moved. Our subject for this afternoon is simply this. How long will this storm last? Oh, bless you, Jesus. How long will this storm last? Jesus. Oh, Jesus. David, the chief musician, was writing this psalm of grief to God, and he was saying to God, I've been going through the same thing over and over, and I'm at the point now where I can't take it anymore. I'm not going to make it. 
And that was exactly what he needed to do. He needed to give God permission to manifest himself. What I'm trying to tell you, you've been afraid to go in the darkness. But honey, if you don't go through the dark, days you can't see the light of you. I'm so glad for the darkness. I'm so glad for the storm. Because in the storm is how I learn to pray. In the storm is how I learn to cry. David said, Psalms 13, how long will thou forget me? You feel like you out there all by yourself. You feel like it doesn't matter what you do and how hard you try, things keep getting worse. See, that's what the devil wants you to believe. Because he's trying to keep you from walking past this season into the next. Oh, yes. That's why David also wrote in the 23rd Psalm, Yea, though I walk through the valleys and the shadows. Uh, y'all see, y'all ain't going to help me here today. Uh, but somebody needs to understand if you're going to take the word, you're going to have to believe the word. Uh, because I come to the place now. now in your life. Well, honey, that's good for you. I have dark moments all the time. And it's because of darkness that I've wrestled with in my life that helps me to embrace God, my Father. It now helps me to know where my help comes from. Because my help comes from the Lord. Because what I found in my storm that can be somebody right next to you. That and they don't even know where you are and what's going on with you. But how many of you know that we have a high priest who can be touched by the feelings of our infirmities? When my heart is broken, I can go to him. When I feel all alone, I can call on him. Oh, how long will the storm last? David said, Oh Lord, forever. How long will thou hide thy face from me? And what I tell you is when you get to the place where you start murmuring and complaining, I used to say that was a bad place to be. But you know what? I'm finding out something now. That when my flesh starts murmuring and complaining, that's telling me there's a transition going on. That means my flesh is getting tired of You got to get sick and tired of being sick and tired. And until you get to a place where the nasty, filthy stuff that's been trying to take your life gets to a place where you don't want it no more, that it don't taste the same. Hallelujah. David got to the place 
where he started saying, ain't no hope for me. This thing's been going on too long. Ain't no hope. I'm wasting my time. David said, this thing will last forever. David then went into Psalms 13 and 2 and said, how long shall I take counsel in my soul? How long am I going to trust this thing in my spirit? My flesh tells me to let go. My flesh tells me it's too late. But David said, there's something on the inside telling me, press a little bit further. Press a little bit harder. Because God has not forsaken you. God has not left you. But my flesh says, I can't take it no more. But the thing I want you to understand is when your flesh says, I can't take it anymore. That's the time rejoice because something is dying and the thing that's dying is your flesh your flesh has to die to the will of God how long shall I take counsel in my soul having sorrow in my heart daily how long shall mine enemies be exalted over me we say it don't bother me when the people giving me or causing me the most pain seem to be prospering and doing well we need to stop telling lies <coughs> Asaph said when I considered the wealth and the prosperity of the wicked how I'm making commitments to God and making sacrifices but yet I look around people that don't even know God. That's causing all the difficulties in and with me. I see them prospering. Asaph said my foot almost slipped. In other words, I got to the place when I said it was better for me to go with them than to stay here. Uh, but Asaph said, but then there was a day where the saints got together and went into the temple. Now, That there's an end to the wicked. I was reminded of why I make the sacrifices that I do. Because I found out that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is a. See, see y'all don't understand what I'm trying to tell you. The storm is to let you see that there's nothing greater than your God. Consider and hear me, oh Lord my God. Lighten mine eyes. In other words, we need to ask God, Lord, let me see your will. We keep asking God, let me see what I'm asking for. That's the problem. Because what you're asking God for is what, you, what he wants you to have. Or what you really need. So God's not going to give you the thing you're asking for because what he has in store for you is better than what you thought you wanted. So you say, God, enlighten my eyes. Open my eyes to see where you're bringing this thing. Let me see your glory. And if I can see your glory, how many know that's enough for me to just wait till my change come? Y'all don't understand what I'm trying to tell you. We, we want these saints to just come instantly and we want to just be able to walk away and go, ooh, that was pretty tough. Uh -uh. I want to feel every moment of the pain. Uh, no. I want to be able, when I get to the other side and I think about looking back, I want to be reminded of how. See, maybe I shouldn't say this, but I've got to. If Medical science was not so good at what it did. A lot of people wouldn't be doing some of the things that they're doing. Yes. Y'all look at me I'm crazy. Amen. These little 15, 16 year old girls going out here and having babies, one after the other, if they stop giving them epidurals and let them go through some natural childbirth, they'll remember the next time they're about to creep out and they'll be reminded of the pain 
to go. Y'all see, y'all trying to look at me like I'm crazy. See, what's happening is, is that the world's giving us an antidote to our conscience as it relates to sin. We used to be reminded of our results or the results of sin. So when we didn't step out on God because we knew there were consequences. Oh, but now we can step out and look back and go, I dare you to say something to me. Uh, I call you out. See, the antidote to that is we all live right. We all line up with the word. So when somebody step out, you say, oh, no, wait a second here. We rebuke that in the name of Jesus because the word says. Y'all look at me like I'm crazy. See? When I fell through the seat, nearly fell through the ceiling Thursday, when I came down and looked at the mess that was in the kitchen, I immediately said, you know what? The things that I've been putting off, it's going to get taken care of because I won't be going up in that attic another time when I'm tired. Did y'all get what I'm trying to tell you? I got the message. I got the message. See, see, we not get the message. That's why we got to go through the same things over and over again. And what God is saying to you is, I'm letting the darkness come so you can remember what it felt like when you couldn't do nothing about your situation. Y'all don't understand what I'm trying to tell you. We sit in there talking about, I don't know what that is. That's why he's bringing you to this place and to this season. Go quickly to Mark chapter 4. And believe it or not, I'm almost finished. Mark chapter 4, the gospel according to Mark. How long will this storm last? Somebody say with me, until the true power. Somebody say with me, together loudly. Until the true power is revealed. Yeah, y'all won't get that. Yeah, y'all won't get that. I'll ask the question and y'all give me the answer. How long will this storm last? Y'all don't say that like y'all believe it. Amen. Let me try it one more time. How long will this storm last? Who is the true power? That cousin that has more than they need and they can help you out. Ah, that friend up the road that you can always depend on. Oh, that phone call to mama or daddy. Jesus. Oh, see, 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 see. Watch this, watch this. Mark 4, 37 through 41 says, And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the mark, into the, sh into the ship, so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. I'm going to stop right there. Mark 4.37 just said, the ship that Jesus sent his disciples on were now in the midst of a hurricane. So much so that the ship was taking on water and it was now full. The ship was now full. But get this. That intrigues me and blows my mind all at the same time. The Bible says he was in the hinder part of the ship. What? Asleep on a what? Now, 
That tells me that even while Jesus was asleep, he had authority over all the elements. Y'all yeah, won't get that. See, y'all don't have visual pictures when you read the word. The ship was filled with water, but it couldn't touch Jesus. See, I got to give somebody some revelation. You got storms all around you and in your life. As long as you are hidden in him and he in you, it can't touch you. Y'all don't get that. Y'all just read it. The disciples came and woke him up. The waters didn't wake him. The storms didn't wake him. The disciples woke him. You say, you say, why doesn't God move because I got these storms in my life? Why doesn't God come into my situation because I got this problem and that problem? Things don't move God. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I mean, I'm trying to give y'all so all this understanding, and y'all looking at me like deer's caught in the in the headlight. Things don't move God. God's people move Him. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and delivered him out of all his. How long? Will the storm last? You see, y'all ain't paying attention. Thank you all. But watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. And they awake him and say unto him, Master, care thou not, we what? The disciples fought it to be death. But Jesus was not even troubled by it because he knew the purpose for the storm. Let me say that again. The disciples were troubled, but Jesus was not even moved because he knew the purpose for the storm. Master, cannot not we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace be still. See, that tells me that people of God are affected by situations, they are affected by elements. That's because their foundation is not on the Word of God. Y'all don't get what I'm trying to tell you. Come storm or fire. If I'm standing on the word, how many of y'all know I'm okay? Y'all yeah, don't get what I'm saying. Let, let me tell you, too, tell, you, tell you it this way. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but the word shall stand forever. Yeah, we quote it, but we don't believe it. We quote it, but we don't believe it. That's why we don't hide ourselves in the word of God anymore. Because we don't believe the word for what it says. We don't believe that when God says it, he has to manifest it according to what he said. Look at this. And... The wind ceased, and there was a great calm. Not only was there great calm with the wind and the sea, but there was also great calm with the men. Y'all don't get that. How many of y'all realize that we want God to speak to our situation? When he doesn't need to speak to our situation, he needs to remind us. Of what he's already said. How long 
will this storm last? Watch this. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no what? I'll tell you why we are so fearful. Because we don't know what God's word says. And we have not been properly taught to believe what God says. Whether Pastor Turner is in Charleston or California, your faith should be the same. Y'all understand what I'm trying to tell you. Whether your preacher is where he's supposed to be or in another country, your faith is supposed to be the same. Why? Because Jesus promised, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. <laughs> See, I'm human. I can only be one place at a time. But God can be in Canada and New Mexico all at the same time with all powers in both places. How long will this storm last? Okay, I, I give y'all instructions again. I ask the question, y'all give me the answer. That's what I'm trying to get. I'm trying to keep you alert. Watch this. Watch this. The Bible said, and he said unto them, why are ye so fearful? And how is it that ye have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said one to the other, what manner of man, what manner of, what manner of, that even the wind and the sea you know how sad that is? Jesus had been with these men. He just fed 5,000 men besides women and children. And they didn't get that he was God in the flesh. What does that say to us? God reveals himself over and over and over to us. And he puts us or allows us to go into another situation or another season or into a storm. And we don't trust him from the last thing he just brought us out of. amazed that the winds and the waves had to obey his commandment. Amen. Now, was this not just the same Jesus who fed all these people? Was this not the same Jesus who made wine out of water? Is this not the same Jesus who kept your mind regulated? Is this not the same Jesus who delivered you out of a horrible pit? Is this not the same Jesus who died for your sins? Is this not the same Jesus that says all powers are in my hand? Into the country 
of the gatherings. And when he was coming out of the ship, immediately they met him out of the tombs, a man with a righteous spirit. Did y'all ever notice that when Jesus was on the earth, there was a whole lot of people demon possessed? Did y'all ever notice that? There were people who were sick because of demons. There were people that were blind because of demons. There were people crippled because of demons. There were people out of their minds because of demons. They come out of the ship and what do they meet? A man with an unclean spirit. Watch this. Who was dwelling among the tombs and no man could do what? In other words, he had supernatural powers. Now, y'all let that just resonate for a little bit. Satan was revealing his strength to the natural man. Telling the natural man, if you come against this, I will destroy you. Y'all look at me like you crazy, like I'm crazy. In other words, Satan says, let me show you how strong I am. Y'all try to bind this man and see what happens. So the people stayed away from him. The storm had to last until the true powers could be revealed. Jesus was coming to show the Jews in the world that Satan is not the true power. Oh, Y'all don't get what I'm about to tell you. Jesus was showing you, coming to show them that all powers are in my. I see, I haven't gone to the grave yet, but I'm still Elohim. Y'all hey, don't get what I'm trying to. Let, let me just take y'all to the book and y'all see what I'm telling you. Watch this. Who, was his, who had his dwelling among the tombs and no man could bind him? No, not with chains. Because. That he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him. And the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. Watch this. And always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs crying and what? With stones. In other words, the natural part of this man was trying to get these spirits out of him. How do you get that out of the book, preacher? I too was demon possessed. I know what it feels like to have things controlling you and you wishing to die to stop it. And you can't do nothing about it. I know what it is to get in the presence of church folks. And they just in another world don't even know the help that you need. Y'all don't understand what I'm trying to tell you. Well, watch, watch this. Watch this. Watch, watch this. But there goes a conjunction. There goes a conjunction. In other words, Satan had control up to this place. But when he saw the disciples, when he saw church folks in the proper attire, but when he saw who? That's what I'm trying to tell you. Stop trying to show people you and show them Jesus. You know what I'm trying to say? I don't see why it takes all that because after all, God wants you to have pleasure. No, God wants you to reveal him. And in order to reveal him, you've got to sacrifice. You've got to suffer in your flesh so that the Spirit of God might reveal John said it this way. I must decrease that he might increase. All right, y'all getting it. Y'all getting it. Oh, how long will this storm last? Until the true power is revealed. Watch this. Watch this. Y'all getting it. Watch this. Watch this. He says. He says. And. 
praying with a loud voice. He said, but when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and did what? Worshipped him. Now demons don't worship God. But the flesh of that man wanted deliverance. God allowed this man to stay in torment long enough so that Jesus and his disciples can get in a ship, went through a hurricane so that they could see that this man had power over everything. So now when they're coming against the powers of darkness, they can show the true powers of Oh, y'all going y'all getting it. I will take y'all someplace today. Watch this, watch this. The Bible says, and he cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus? The Son of the Most High. I adjure thee. I adjure thee by who? God. Now look at the devil trying to use power that doesn't belong to him. I adjure thee by what? God. Notice he couldn't use the name. Y'all won't get that. The demons couldn't use the name. That's why you can let folks come in church and shout and carry on, but if they can't use the name, you better step away from them. Uh, the Bible said having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such term. Y'all ain't y'all say y'all don't put scriptures together. That's exactly what it's telling you. That demons can try to use the name of God. But they can't call him by his name. They can't say Yahweh. They can't say Yeshua. They can't say in English, Jesus. What, 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 what's this? What's this? What's this? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. For he said unto him, Come out of the man. The man. Thou what? Unclean spirit. Jesus said, shut your mouth. Shut your mouth. Yes. And come on out of here. Yeah, right. See, we debating with people all this back and forth. Jesus. Got time to debate. Jesus. Come on out of here, you unclean spirit. Yes. Watch this, watch this. And he asked him, what is thy what? Name. Now, why is it important that you know the name of the spirit or spirit you're dealing with? Yes. <laughs> Say what? Because whatever you bind on earth, it's going to be, you got to call the name. You see, all, see, all this stuff is right there, but you got to put it together. Watch this, watch this, watch this. He said, what is thy name? And he answered, saying, my name is Legion, for we are what? And he besought him much that he would not send them away out of the what? Why? Because he had dominion over that territory. In other words, Satan assigned us to this region, and if we leave, we're going to be in trouble. You're trying to figure out why the same thing keeps coming back to you at the same place and they have the same consequences. It's because you're in the same place doing the same thing you've always done. And when you do those things to give control to those spirits, that's why the Bible says repent. In other words, cut them off. Stop it dead in the track and turn away from sin and turn to God. Because when you say to the spirit and to the devil no and yes to God. How long will the storm last? Until the true power be revealed. Watch this. And he asked him, what is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. And he besought him much that he would not send them away out of the country. Now there were there nigh unto the mountains a great herd of what? Fine. See, y'all gotta get, get that, get that, get that, get that. Mm -hmm. The spirits were what? This man had a what kind of spirit? This man had an unclean spirit. These spirits or legion couldn't go into a clean vessel. 
So God said there were their swines feeding. What are swines? Unclean animals. I'm going to give somebody some medical revelation. You battle with hypertension. And you can't figure out why you can't get your pressure to go down. Because you're still eating your bacon in the morning. Your sausage in the morning. You still love your pork chops. Y'all yeah, looking at me like I'm crazy. Get rid of the swine. And you will see a drastic reduction in your blood pressure. Y'all sitting there going, what are you talking about? I'm going to show you all what happens. Watch this. And all the devils besought him saying, send us into the what? That we may. Watch this. The demons didn't have the authority to go somewhere after Jesus had them in his control. That's why I tell saints, when you in church binding spirits and you don't know what to do with them once you bind them, you setting up a whole bunch of mess. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Because you, I bind you in the name of Jesus. What you going to do that? You got them bound. You got to give them directions. Y'all don't get that. You come in your house. I bind these spirits in the name of Jesus. Now you got them stuck in your house. Because you hadn't commanded them to go somewhere. They came and asked him. Please let us go to the next place. Do y'all see this? Y'all see this in the book? He asked, what is your name first so I can call you by the right name? And now I got your name. I'm going to bind you in your name. I'm going to bind you according to what your name is. Then I'm going to tell you where you're going. Watch this. Watch this. That we may enter into the swine and forth with who? Gave them what? Please. Jesus gave them permission to go. You bind spirits of sickness and everything else, don't let them linger in your home. You bind it in the name of Jesus and you cast them to hell. Y'all yes. sitting there binding spirits. Spirits sitting in your house still have an effect because you just got them bound in your house, but it's still there. When I bind you, I cast you out. I command you to go somewhere. Yo, yo, I'm going to show y'all. Jesus gave them leave and the unclean spirits did what? And entered into the what? And the herd. Y'all want to know why this, our world is so violent right now? Because of demonic influence and possession. Demons cause things to change their nature to go after other kinds of things. I'm going to show you all that too. Y'all yeah, think I'm crazy. Watch me show you. The swines and they heard, look what it says. He entered into the swine and ran and heard and ran violently down a steep what? Into the what? They were about 2,000 and were choked in the what? Now, if y'all grew up in the country like I did, you know pigs don't have nothing to do with water. They love mud, but they don't swim, and they don't go in water. These demons cause these pigs to go chasing after the thing that they normally avoid. You try to ask yourself the question, why do I have these kind of feelings? Why are these people doing these things? Don't they have common sense? You won't get it. It's not common sense. They're being influenced by demonic powers. Why or how long will the storm last so that the true powers can be revealed? Who is the true power in this day? The body of Christ. The reason why devil Satan is having a field day is because the church in the four walls debating doctrines and Bible stories. Oh, when we come out of the four walls and walk the streets in the name of Jesus, 
when we go into the hospitals in the name of Jesus commanding cancer to come out of people and be cast into hell people are going to die with sickness people are going to die from violence but when the church four walls, nice air conditioning, nice temperature, comfortable seats. And we sit that going, we lock our doors when we drive through the communities. We lock our doors in the house because we're afraid. What kind of crazy stuff is that? You need to know who you are. And my storms have shown me that God has given me power. Amen. There was a huge German Shepherd dog across the street from my house. That I mean, he sat there and watched me. And it's like he timed me as soon as I got out of my car and turned my back. When I turned around, that dog was charging at me. And that dog had to have been on four legs about four feet tall. And when I turned around and looked at that, I said, in the name of Jesus. It's okay. Why? Because I had dominion as long as I believed in the power of God. Y'all sitting there playing with the devil going, patty cake, patty cake. Uh-uh. I ain't playing patty cake with you, Satan. You got to get out of here. You've been in my life long enough. You've been messing up my destiny and what I'm Bondage 
is really the thing that God is causing and wanting it to be our blessings. Because God's trying to get you to stop trusting in yesterday's strength and yesterday's understanding and he's trying to force you into another place. Uh, the Bible says it this way, from glory to glory. He's trying to take you from revelation to revelation. But you can't have anything revealed unless you go searching. What am I saying to you? Your storm is passing over. Your storm is passing over. You trying to ask the question, why is it then that every time I turn around something new is happening? Because God's just having you to exercise your faith. But rather than exercising your faith, you go back to failing. Uh-uh, I ain't gonna do that. Okay, God, you did it for me the last time. Come on in here and do this. Well, what, what, what if I say it and it don't happen? Then it's not on you, it's on God. How dare you think that you got some reputation up hold? God knows who he is. You don't think God knows what he wants to do? Amen. So you think, I just won't say anything to protect him. God just don't need you to protect him. If anything, he needs you to get out of his way. Amen. Some of you got umbrellas up. Your umbrellas have failed you because the winds have been too strong and the umbrella that used to cover you now letting the rain pour down on top of you but you don't have enough sense to get the umbrella down let it go you're still trying to develop your own safety mechanisms God says no -uh. I want to give you covering under the shadows of my wings but you won't trust me to come under my wings. You still trusting in the arms of flesh. You still trusting in all these superficial stuff. God says my protection never fails. How long will the storm last? Anybody stay with me. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, from the bottom of my heart to the depth of my soul, yes, Lord, completely, yes, my soul says yes. Come on, come on. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, from the bottom of my heart to the depth of my soul. Yes, Lord, completely, yes, my soul says yes. Come on, one more time, everybody together. Yes, Lord. Let's 
let's try this. I love you. Be revealed. If you're here, just step out, just step out, just step out. 